Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be reviewing the newest album from the 1975, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. Now before I get into the full review here today, I think it's important that I share my history with this group because that might be important in understanding where I'm coming from when it comes to talking about a lot of this new material on this album. Now, the 1975 was a group that I first really started exploring when their last album dropped back in 2016. It had the very long title to it, I don't remember all of it to be honest, so I'm not going to bother saying the name aloud, but it was dropped in 2017. If you're a fan, you know what, what I'm talking about. Um, I heard lots of people that I follow here on YouTube uh, had a lot of nice things to say about that album, so I was interested in checking it out to see if I was, you know, going to really like it. And, you know, after giving it some listens, it really did not do all too much for me, but I was really determined for some reason to like this album, so I started going to listen to it in many different contexts, you know, when I was tired, when I was very awake, when I was, you know, in the middle of the day, at night, when I was just listening to it as background music while doing something else, listening to it while I was just completely focused on it, and no matter how many times I tried to get into this album, I really just could not for the most part. I mean, I don't think it's a terrible album. I would say it's average overall. There are some tracks on it that I do enjoy, but overall, it didn't do much for me overall. I also checked out their debut album and also didn't do a whole ton for me. Uh, there, were, there were also some songs on that project I did enjoy. So overall, I haven't really enjoyed the 1975 album in full, but I think that these guys do have talent. I think they do have the potential to make a good album. And that's why I was interested in checking out this new album here that they recently dropped. I was hoping that maybe this would be the one that got me to be a big fan of these guys. Because I feel like, you know, I want to be a fan of these guys. Just, I don't know why, I, I just do. Uh, but after listening to this album, you know, it, this album also didn't really do much for me, guys. In fact, this is probably my least favorite release from the 1975 so far. And while the previous two records from these guys really didn't do much for me because they were just pretty uninteresting at their worst, this album does have, you know, some worse moments on it, I feel. Uh, I, I can understand why some people would like this album more than their past two, and I have seen a fair amount of people say that, uh, considering that this album is definitely the most experimental that the band has put out to date. They do take several risks here on this project, trying out some new sounds, doing some new things, but I don't really feel like they pan out uh, all that well. You know, experimentation is good and all, but you actually have to deliver with it as well. You can't just experiment and have that be the be-all, end-all. It has to sound good at the end of the day. And this album, you know, it experiments, but it doesn't really sound good. The opening track to this album starts off pretty slowly. It's kind of like this nice build-up into the rest of the album, you think it's just kind of a, a typical kind of opening track type deal. And then you have these this swell of auto-tuned vocals come in here. And this introduces one of the many things that the group decided to experiment with here on this project. Auto-tune and other vocal manipulations. Now, when it comes to me personally and my music, I'm not someone who dislikes auto-tune. I'm not one of those people who just writes it off. Uh, immediately for, for whatever silly reason. I think that there's a time and place where it can be used creatively and effectively. And, you know, those times really are when, of course, like I just said, it's used creatively in an interesting manner, and it also has to sound good. Now, on this album, the 1975 do use the auto-tune uh, in a creative way, I guess you could say, at least they're trying to, but I don't think it sounds good most of the time it pops up. And on this first opening song, it just doesn't sound very pleasant to me. It's just like I said, it kind of swells in every so often here. It's very difficult to make out what's being sung here because of it, though I do feel like that was somewhat the point. But still, it just doesn't sound very pleasant to me. It just sounds very out of place and not this doesn't sound good overall. The second track on the album, Give Yourself a Try, is probably one of the more straightforward tracks on the album. And for the most part, this is probably one of the better tracks in my opinion. There's not all too much here that I don't care for. I mean, the lyrics don't really do much for me. They're kind of drenched in that pretentiousness that I've never really cared for in the 1975, and this is by far not the only track on the album where this is a problem. But my biggest problem with this track is just that I feel like the guitar line that runs throughout this track is just mixed a little bit too loudly in the song. It makes it difficult, like the slightest bit uh, difficult to understand what's being sung here on this track. and. Like, I don't feel like that was what they were trying to go for. I just feel like the guitar needs to be mixed a little bit more quietly here 
in this song. It's not overbearingly, you know, in your face bad, but it just was slightly bothersome, and that just annoyed me while listening to this track, especially considering that a lot of the rest of this song is okay. And then it moves on to the third track, Two Time, Two Time, Two Time, and this is probably my least favorite track on the album. It sees the group experimenting with, like, dance hall and tropical of uh, sounding music here and, and it wasn't good when artists like Drake tried to do it a few years ago and it's especially not good when the 1975 tried to do it here. This track it just takes the most basic aspects of a different genre and just integrates them you know unashamedly into the band's sound. It's not a nice you know marriage of these of, of the two really. It's just kind of like the 1975 decided to play dress up for a track and it doesn't sound all too interesting. The vocals sound kind of annoying. Most of this track is just the chorus being repeated over and over. It's just a pretty repetitive track overall. It's just not one that I find myself enjoying at all. It's a weird experiment. There's no other moment on this album where they go for a sound like this and it really does showcase what I mean when I say that the, even though this album experiments and I do appreciate the fact that they're experimenting here on this thing it doesn't always pan out, and oftentimes on this album it does not, and the results are oftentimes some of the worst tracks on the album, like this one here. It's just, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I, I really cannot stand this song. This isn't the only time in the album that the group decides to do a one-off experimentation with a different genre. Another prime example of this is the track I Like America and America Likes Me that comes later on in the track listing. This song apparently is taking some inspiration from a lot of more modern trap inspired hip-hop uh, down to the rattling hi-hats and the percussion here to the vocals on this thing which uh, have a ton of auto-tune on them again like much of you know this, the auto croon style of hip-hop does but not only that but that combined with the thick British accent that the singer of this band has makes, you know, deciphering the lyrics to this track near impossible when just listening to it on its own. And this, this track just annoys me as well, like the two-time track. It's another example of the band just taking another sound that's popular, trying to force it into their own, but not really doing it in a way that I feel works. And I'm not a really big fan of this style of music to begin with, but you know, at least when it comes to artists in this sound, like Future for example, at least they're doing their own style of music. Even if I don't care for it all too much, it's their own thing and I can respect that on some level. But here it just feels like the 1975 are going for something that's just popular right now for the sake of doing something that's popular right now. The experiment doesn't really pay off here on this track. The vocals just sound really annoying. I hate how warbly and unpleasant of the vocals on this thing sound between the auto-tune and the very thick accent. Uh, the instrumentation is very uh, just uninteresting, and a very uninteresting mix of the trap sounding instrumentation and what you might expect in a 1975 song. It's just not very good overall. And the lyrics on this track, I, I can at least respect the lyrics on this track talking about gun violence in America and how they aren't happy with this, but like I said, because of the fact that it's near impossible to make out what's being sung here on the song, the lyrics really don't matter all that much because I really have a hard time understanding them here. And of course, you can look up the lyrics, it's not that difficult to do, but still, it would have been a lot better if this track that you know had some of the more potent lyrics on this album was understandable. Uh, it just doesn't really work at the end of the day, especially when you also consider the fact that this track's lyrics don't really connect all that nicely to a lot of the other themes present on the album that have to do with relationships and the internet and just technology in general, if you can already tell by the title of the album. And sure, you can draw some connections between the, the gun violence and all that to the internet and how people can easily see this nowadays because it's all over the news and the internet and all that, but the 1975 really don't do that here on this track. They don't really make those connections. It just feels like a track that's about something completely different thrown into this album, done in a style that sounds completely different from anything else in this album. It just does not work at the end of the day is what I'm trying to say. This is immediately followed up by another one of my least favorite tracks on the entire album, The Man Who Married a Robot slash Love Theme. This track is pretty much a poor man's version of the track Fitter Happier 
from Radiohead's OK Computer. And I'm, I'm certain that the, the parallels between this track and that track are intentional. Like, there's no way they could have just accidentally made a song in the same style as that track just by chance. This is definitely an inspired song, um, but it just does not work in the same way that I feel that Fit or Happier does in the context of OK Computer. This track has the Siri voice kind of reading off this dialogue, similar to how the Apple voice thing from Fit or Happier was reading off the words in that track, uh, kind of talking about this guy who kind of like falls in love with the internet and this of obviously you know there's there's commentary in there and all that stuff but i just don't find it to be super interesting at the end of the day like nothing that they really say here in this short spoken word type track really does a whole lot like and that's that's just another thing about the album in general they don't really say all too much about the internet or technology or relationships and how these things tie together at least nothing new that you probably haven't heard before as someone living in the year 2018 like there's very little on this thing that i would consider to be super unique or interesting when it comes to the themes present here for the most part it's just stuff that you've probably already heard stuff about how the internet affects relationships and all that stuff and the same could be said for this track here it's just a real pain to listen to just just how uninteresting it is and also just how uninspired it is given that fit or happy or just does what this track does but better overall and you know it's not a very good thing when i can say that this track there's no point in listening to it because there literally exists a better version of this track that's been around for nearly two decades at this point the band does attempt to make this track a bit different from fit or happier though by having a bit more music you know, injected into it, I guess you could say Fit or Happier was just kind of that very cold, spoken word thing. Uh, whereas here, there is some instrumentation going on, especially after the spoken word part comes to an end, where you have Love Theme, the second part of this track. But it really just sounds like instrumental filler to me. Like, very little of it is memorable or interesting. I just feel like they're trying to, you know, maybe pad out the runtime, either that or just provide a more cinematic feel to this track that really isn't all that interesting. Now I've been pretty harsh on this album up to this point in the review, but that's mostly because I've been talking a ton about the songs on this thing that I just really did not like. The rest of the cuts on here, uh, most part for the most part, are pretty boring to me. Like, I don't like them, but they're not as offensively bad as a lot of the tracks I've just talked about already. But for the most part, they're just uninteresting tracks with not all too much to say about them overall and I just found to be a pain to listen to not because they really did anything that was super offensively bad but just because they were you know offensively boring overall the track how to draw slash petricor hope I'm pronouncing that right is this two-part track that comes earlier on on the album and it's not a super interesting track overall I do feel like this song could be cut down significantly in terms of its runtime uh, just because there's so little on it that's really super interesting. I do kind of like the more electronic breakdown that comes towards the middle of this track. It's a nice change of pace in here. But like, like I said, this track would have been a bit better had it been shorter overall. There's also some slower, more acoustic type tracks on this thing that are just so hard to get through at times with how uninteresting they sound. Tracks like Be My Mistake, Surrounded by Heads and Bodies, Mine... These are some of the least interesting songs on this entire album. And sure, tracks like uh, Two Time uh, or the, 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 the Auto Croon song, whatever it was called, those tracks, you know, weren't, weren't good songs, but they were kind of interestingly bad, I guess. Uh, but these songs that I'm talking about now are just so boring and uninteresting that I have a hard time paying attention to them or really distinguishing them from one another. And, you know, the lyrics on them aren't anything all too special either. They just kind of fall into a lot of the same th stuff that the 1975 typically talk about. Uh, it, it just, these tracks don't do anything for me at the end of the day. They're not interesting lyrically. They're not interesting instrumentally. They're not interestingly put together in the track listing of the album. And that's another thing. The album structure results in like the last third of this album, the last five tracks or so, being pretty much slow track after slow track with the exception of one of the songs I will talk about later on. 
and it just creates one of the roughest patches of this album to really get through. And sure, this last third of the album or so doesn't really have any tracks that I think are super awful, but it is just such a pain to get through this last third of the album with how boring so many of these songs are. The two tracks that come right at the end of the album, I Couldn't Be More In Love and I Always Want To Die Sometimes, do at least change things up a little bit more than some of the other tracks I was just talking about. Uh, they have either, you know, a bit more of a catchy chorus to them or something along those lines. The last track does have a bit of a more cinematic feel that I guess works nicely as a closer track, but they're still not super interesting songs at the end of the day. They're more interesting than the three I was just talking about, but still not all too exciting. The track Sincerity is Scary is probably one of the better examples of experimentation here on this project, taking in some jazzier instrumentation at times and incorporating it adequately enough into the 1975's typical sound. It's nothing outstanding or anything quite like that, but it's done okay enough, and considering that most of the experiments on this album tend to be some of the biggest flops on this thing, uh, it's definitely commendable that they were at least able to incorporate something decently into their own sound and make a song that at the end of the day, you know, isn't super interesting in my opinion, but it at least is somewhat passable. Uh, so yeah, there are a couple tracks on this thing, however, that I think are okay, enjoyable songs, though. I've been pretty harsh up to this point, but there are a couple tracks on here that I think are okay for what they are. And surprisingly, considering that this is the 1975's most experimental project to date, uh, the tracks on this thing that I find most interesting are probably the most straightforward, poppy tracks on the entire album. The track Love It If We Made It, I think, is one of the stronger cuts on this thing. Now, I do think the lyrics on this track are not very good, to say the least. It's pretty much just the group kind of listing out different popular terms and bits of popular culture and things like that relevant to 2018 and modern society. I, I'm describing it in a way that's kind of vague, but there's not really an easy way to be more specific than that. Like, just give the lyrics a look if you haven't already done so, and you might get a good idea of what I mean, but it's kind of difficult to describe it more specific than that. And overall, there's kind of like this idea soup of different modern things, I guess an attempt to try to connect the internet to modern life or something like that. Uh, it wasn't super interesting or well done, but the actual track itself is still decently catchy in my opinion, and it is, as a result, one of the more enjoyable moments on this thing. And then you have the track It's Not Living If It's Not With You, which is just another more straightforward pop track with a very catchy chorus to it. And overall, it's probably my favorite track on this entire album. In fact, it's probably one of the few tracks on this thing that I could really enjoy from start to finish with very minimal problems getting in the way. It's just a, a, a decent pop song overall. And, you know, I kind of wish... You know, on some levels, I could respect the fact that the brand was more experimental on this album overall. I could always, you know, respect when artists do that, but it just did not really work for the most part here on this project. And I'm kind of hoping that the band maybe tries to stick more to just doing more straightforward, poppy-sounding material. Um, either that, or at least getting the experimentation down a bit better. Uh, because tracks like this one are, you know, are easily my favorite in the entire track listing. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion when it comes to this album, but yeah, I just found the more straightforward poppy cuts on this thing to be the most enjoyable. And heck, even a track like Give Yourself a Try, which I know I criticized earlier for some parts of it, but even still, you know, despite some of those complaints, I do think it is still one of the more solid cuts on this thing. And once again, it is another one of the more straightforward, to the point, pop rock cuts on this album. So... Clearly, there's a pattern here uh, concerning the tracks that I enjoy compared to the ones that I don't enjoy. So overall, I really did not care for this album all too much, if you couldn't already tell by this point. Like I, like I said before, I can respect the fact that the band is being a bit more experimental here on this thing, but the majority of the experiments here just do not work. And the ones that do work only manage to sound decent, really, at the end of the day. And I really hope that going forward, the band, at least when it comes to experimentation, decides to be a bit more focused with what they decide to do, considering that the experimentation on this album is just a bit all over the place. Like I said, some tracks take inspiration from one particular genre, and that's the only instance of it occurring really on the album. 
Uh, it's, it's just a bit of a mess at times with all the sounds that the band is pulling from, and it would be much better if they at least decided to pick one sound and maybe stick to that for the entire album instead of being a bit all over the place. The use of auto-tune throughout this album is pretty grating, none of the instrumentals really stand out as being super exciting, and the lyrics aren't anything to write home about either. I do respect the fact that they went for a greater concept here and tried to rope together you know, topics like the internet and relationships and technology and all this life in the 2018 year and all that stuff. They tried to bring it all together but it just kind of fell apart because they didn't really end up saying anything all too interesting about it here on this album. Pretty much anything that they really say about these things is stuff that you've probably already heard if you're alive in 2018, which just makes it really uninteresting to listen to at the end of the day. And a lot of the best ideas that they have when it comes to talking about these topics are ideas that they just kind of got from somewhere else, like on the fitter, happier uh, bootleg that comes on this album. It, it, it's an interesting idea, but it's been done before, so it's not so interesting this time around. The most disappointing thing about all of this really is that the 1975 is a group that definitely does have talent and the potential to make a good album. I can still see that through the faults on this album, and a good few times on this thing, they were able to pull together a solid song. Uh, so they definitely could release a good album down the line. I think they still have the potential to, um, but nothing that they've done so far, particularly this album, has really excited me all that much. But I can understand if you'd feel differently. Overall, I recommend this album to fans of the 1975 or people who are just into this style of music to begin with. Um, those are the people who are probably going to enjoy this the most. If you've never been a fan of this group, um, maybe you'll like this considering it's a bit more experimental. It does do some things differently, but at the same time, maybe you won't because maybe those experiments won't really do much for you like me. Uh, I don't know, really. Uh, yeah, that's those are just my thoughts on this album, though just my own personal opinion. Feel free to have your own. In fact, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content, things like album reviews, countdown lists, discussion videos, all that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching, and stay golden.